and they all use many of the same components, turbines, generators, and transformers. The difference between a geothermal plant and the others is, while you have to bring the fuel to conventional power plants, geothermal plants are built where the fuel is. There are three main types of geothermal power plants. Dry steam plants, flash steam plants, and binary or two cycle plants. While they all do the same thing, each operates in a slightly different way. In dry steam geothermal plants, steam shoots up the well and is passed through a rock catcher to filter out impurities, then put directly into a turbine. The force of the steam is used to spin turbine blades, which in turn spin a generator that produces electricity. The used steam is then cooled and injected back into the ground. Dry steam plants are rare because not all geothermal wells produce steam. Flash steam power plants are more common. Instead of injecting the steam directly from the well into the turbine, these plants collect the hot water in a flash tank first, remove the water, then inject the remaining steam into the turbine. Binary or two-cycle geothermal plants are more technically advanced because they can make electricity from much cooler water than the others. They do it by first sending hot water from the geothermal well into a heat exchanger. On one side of the heat exchanger, the hot water called brine. On the other, a special working fluid known as binary liquid, usually made up of isopentane. The well water and binary liquid never mix inside the heat exchanger, but the heat energy contained in the brine is transferred to the isopentane. A nice analogy I like to use is an old water radiator in your bedroom. If you put a glass of water on top of that, the glass of water is eventually going to get warm, even though the water in the radiator never touched the water in the glass. That's like our heat exchanger. So the hot water we bring is up is about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The isopentane vaporizes at a little less than that, at about 280 degrees Fahrenheit. And so um, once the liquid turns to a vapor, it builds pressure. We have a, tur a little turbine wheel and if you have a lot of pressure on one side and no pressure on the other side, the pressure is going to try to release across the wheel. As it does that, it makes the wheel spin. Once that turbine's spinning, we have a spinning shaft and we can create electricity by running a magnet past wires and we send that electricity to the grid.